Hey, how's it going on guys? So in this video, we'll discuss about this problem, course schedule. There are total of num courses, courses you have to take labeled from 0 to num courses minus 1. Some courses may have prerequisites. For example, to take course 0, you have to first take course 1, which is expressed as a pair 0, 1. Given the total number of courses and a list of prerequisite pairs, is it possible for you to finish all the courses? So let us consider some examples first. So for this example, the number of courses are 2 and the prerequisite array consists of 1, 0. That is, 1 is dependent on 0. So obviously I can take 0 first and then I can move to first. So yes, it's possible for me to take both the courses. So the output is true for this example. For the next example, the number of courses are still 2 and the prerequisite array consists of 1, 0 and 0, 1. So if you see clearly that there exists a cyclic dependency between the courses 0 and 1. So in order to take 0, you have to take 1. And in order to take 1, you have to take 0. So obviously I cannot do that. So the output is false for this case. Now let's consider one more example. So for this example, the number of courses are 5. And this is the prerequisite array consists given to us. Now what I did over here is for every entry, I created a vertex over here and over here. So we have vertex 1 and vertex 0 and we have a directed edge from 1 to 0 saying that this vertex or this course is dependent on this vertex or this course. Correct. So I have repeated this process for this entire prerequisite array and we are given this graph. Now if you see carefully, we just have to check whether there exists a cycle in the graph or not. In case there is a cycle in the graph, we can say that the courses have a cyclic dependency. So it won't be possible to complete all the courses. So the output is false for that case. And in case there is no cycle, you will be able to finish all the courses. Correct. So then now the question is how to find cycle in a directed graph. That is the question that has been reduced to. So I have written an algorithm over here. So what you can do is you can just pause the video and you can read it out. Now, I am not expecting you to understand this algorithm by just reading it out, but just read it out. Now, what we are going to do in this problem is we are going to do a DFS traversal of this graph and we are going to maintain two boolean arrays visited and explored whenever you are visiting a vertex you will mark this vertex as visited as true and when are you going to mark any vertex as explored as true so when all the neighbors of a vertex are explored you will mark that vertex as explored now in case you are visiting a vertex which has already been visited before and hasn't been explored you have found one cycle now it's okay if you're not able to understand the algorithm currently so what i will do is i'll just debug this algorithm over this example and then things will be more clear i'll take one more example after this so what we are currently doing is we are having this graph and we are starting our dfs from any vertex so we are starting it from three so v over here stands for visited and e over here stands for explored so visited and explored are false for each of the vertex correct now what I will do is since I am over here I will just mark this current vertex as visited and I will move to its neighbor that is 4 that's how DFS works so I have marked this vertex as true and I have moved over 4 now similarly I will mark this vertex 4 as true and I will move to its neighbor that is 0 so in the next slide you can see that yes I have marked this vertex 4 as true and I have moved over here now from 0, I'll move to its neighbor that is 2 and I'll mark this as true. That is visited as true. So if you see, visited for 0 is marked as true and I've moved to its neighbor. Similarly over here, I'll move from 2 to 1. So I have moved to 1 and I've marked visited of 2 as true. So visited for 2 is true. From here, I'll move over here to its neighbor. So what I did is I have moved over here and I've marked this as visited as true. Now, if you see that, what I've just done is I've come across a vertex which has already been visited. So for this visited is true and explored is false. So in this case, we are saying that, yes, there exists a cycle. Now you might think that why are we considering this explored? Means we could have simply considered this V equals true only, right? Means if I'm visiting a vertex which has already been visited before, then I'll just say there exists a cycle. Actually, this explode will come into picture. So I'll just show you one more example where you can clearly see that where is explode coming into the picture. So for this example, what, I, uh, what I'm saying is for this example, I have visited a vertex which has already been visited and hasn't been explored. So I'll return true that I have found one more path to this vertex. Correct. So let us consider one more example. So in this example, the number of courses are four. And the prerequisite array consists of these things. So what I did is I just represent this as a graph over here. 
Now let us try to debug the same algorithm over this example. Okay. So you will be able to understand everything after this debug is finished. Just believe me that just, uh, okay, just wait for like two minutes and you will be able to understand that entire algorithm. So for each verdicts, what I did is I have uh, marked visited and explored as false. So we are starting our DFS from here. So as we are over here, we can either move to one or we can either move to two because there are two adjacent to zero. So we will move to one currently and we will mark this vertex as true. So this is what we did over here. So we have marked this vertex as true and we have moved over here. That is one. Now from here, you can only move to two. So you will mark this vertex as true and you will move to two. As you can see in the next slide, I have marked this vertex one as true and I have moved over here to two. From two, I can only move to three and I'll mark this as true. So I have moved over here and I have marked this as true. Now from three, if you see that there is, uh, there exists no adjacent vertex. So what we will do now I've already said that when all the adjacent vertex of a vertex are explored, we will mark this as explored. So as you can see for this, there exists no neighboring vertex. So you can say that all the neighboring vertex are visited for this because there means there exists no visiting vertex. There is no adjacent vertex. So what we will do is we will go in the recursion back and we will mark this as visited as true and explored as true. So what I did over here is I've marked this vertex as true and explored as true as well, because for this, there exists no neighbor, which is not explored. Correct. Now we are over here in two. So we are back in the recursion currently. Okay. So we are back in the recursion currently. So from two, as you can see, I can now I have, I only had one adjacent neighbor that is three. So I have nothing else. So what I will do is I'll go back in the recursion. So I'll go to one and I'll mark two as explored as true. So that is what I've did over here. I've marked E as true and I've moved over here. So for one as well, all the neighbors are visited. So you will move back and you will mark this as explored as true. So this is what we did over here. Over here e is set to be true and we have moved over here. Now from zero, there exists one more vertex to visit that is this. So we'll go over here. Now, if you see over here at two, we've already visited this vertex before. Now we will check whether we have exploded or not. Actually, we have exploded before. So it means that there exists no cycle. So that's why explode is important. Correct. So what explode is doing is, so in case you're visiting a vertex again, and you haven't exploded yet, then it, then it means that you have found one more part to the same vertex. And then we can say that there exists a cycle. So in this case, we cannot say there exists a cycle because it has already been explored. Correct. So this is not a cycle. Correct. If there exists an edge from two to zero, then I can say there exists a cycle from zero, one, two, and zero. Correct. So again, so as you can see, this has already been explored. So we will back, we will be back in the recursion. We will come over here and we will mark this as true X as well. And the recursion is over. The recursion is over and we are not able to find any cycle. So what we will do is we will say that the recursion is over, no cycle. And thus we return true. It is possible to go through all the courses. No, now I'll just write the code for this algorithm and then things will be more clear. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an agency matrix representation for this uh, graph. Okay. So let us name it as ADJ. Okay. And this is going to be a list of integers. Correct. Okay. And we will maintain two boolean arrays as well that is visited and marked now over here what i will do is i'll initialize adj as new array list of size this thing num courses now i'll just iterate over it for int i equals zero i less than num courses i plus plus and what i will do is adj i is equals to new array list okay so you might uh, you guys might have a problem with this agency list so you can read about agency list on the internet it's available so i can just show you what i'm doing currently over here so if you see for this example what i'm doing is i'm creating an agency list that is zero will point to all the vertex that it's that are present in its neighbor so only 
2 is present in its neighbor so we'll just uh, this is 0 to 2 and then this is 1 to 0 and so on so okay after this what we'll do is we'll simply initialize these arrays as well so visited will be equals to new boolean and the size is going to be same as this thing num courses similarly for marked this will be new boolean num courses you might consider that why i'm considering them as uh, size num courses because actually the total number of courses is equal to the number of vertex in the graph correct so i've already shown this to you so in here if you see the num courses are 5 so this corresponds to the number of vertex in the graph that's why the size for this array list is this and for these two boolean matrices is this now what we will do is we will simply iterate over this thing okay so we'll iterate over this for int i equals 0 i less than prerequisites dot length i plus plus now in the okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to do adj of prerequisites i 0 so this is an array list so we'll add prerequisites of i 1 correct so we have created our agency list over here okay so now what we will do is we will simply do a dfs traversal so what we will do is we will iterate over all the vertices okay and i will check if the current vertex is not visited then what I will do is I will simply mark it as uh, I won't be marking over here. I'll simply check if is cyclic for the current vertex. If it is if cycle exists, then we will return false from here. And if we are out of this loop, we will return true. Correct. Now the question is how can we write this is cyclic method? So simply it's a DFS only. So actually let me add this method so it will return a boolean variable this is the name and it will take the current vertex that is entire correct now first you will visit this vertex and then for its neighbor how can i find the neighbors of this so we can do integer j and this will be adj of i correct so these are the neighbors so now you will check if not visited j if j is not visited then what we will do is we will check we will call the recursion over here for j and in case we are getting a true we will return a true from here now in case i is not visited so that is j is not visited what i will do is i will check whether it is marked or not if it is not marked if marked of j is false then what i can say is we have found a cycle and after this is done what i can do is i can simply put marked of current vertex as true and i can simply return a false from here okay so why i'm marking over here i'm marking over here because for integer i we have explored all the vertices so once this for loop is done we can say that we have visited or we can we have explored all the vertices that is all the adjacent vertex for i so we can simply mark the current vertex as true we've already visited as true in the initial stage and we are marking it as true in the final state okay so things looks clean to me so let me just run this code once so it's giving the correct result let me submit the solution and it got accepted so okay so let me just go through the code one more time so what i did over here is i am maintaining the graph in the form of an agency list and i have having two boolean arrays visited and marked so the size of the list is going to be equal to this num courses so what i'm saying is the number of vertex is same as the number of courses then what i did is i just iterated over this and for each i am just initializing a new array list 
correct then we have these two visited and marked boolean arrays of size num courses then i went over this prerequisite array and we know that so basically there exists a dependency from prerequisites i comma 0 to prerequisites i comma 1 so basically we have created an edge from here to here there exists an edge so that's how we maintain the agency list so once the agency list is maintained we are doing a simple dfs okay so in case this is a dfs so in case the dfs uh, that is the cycle is existing so we can say that we are returning false otherwise we will return true and in the in uh, is cyclic method what we are drawing is for a particular vertex first we are visiting that vertex now we are visiting its adjacent vertex in case the adjacent vertex is not visited we will call the dfs or is cyclic method over that vertex in case we are getting a true we will return a true from here in case the vertex the adjacent vertex has already been visited we will check whether it's marked or not in case it is not marked we will return a true from here and uh, we will mark a vertex when all of its adjacent vertices are already marked and we will return a false so i guess that's it from the video in case you have learned anything from the video you can hit that like button and in order to support my work you can consider subscribing to my channel thank you all